Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. Here's what we have in store in this October 7th, 2013 edition. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, Obamacare is a 99% failure so far. Plus, Miley, football, or the complete collapse of civilization. Take your pick, America. Then, John Rappaport exposes the quiet genocide conducted by Big Pharma. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Top story tonight, ATF tries blocking whistleblowing agents Fast and Furious book. The ATF is blocking the main whistleblower in the Fast and Furious case from publishing a book for pay claiming his retelling of the Mexico gun walking scandal will hurt morale inside the embattled law enforcement agency, according to documents obtained by the Washington Times. Now, if you're not familiar with the Fast and Furious case, this is where the U.S. government, particularly the ATF, gave weapons to uh, Mexican drug cartels. Now, there's all these talks about background checks and these fully automatic weapons, and why does anybody need an AR-15 or an AK-47? All this stuff was bypassed and given to Mexican drug cartels, and now they're trying to silence the guy who's daring to put out a book. But this isn't the first time the ATF has tried to hush up their employees. Take a look at this clip from the then acting director of the ATF, B. Todd Jones. As an employee of ATF, should you decide not to abide by the standards of conduct or the rules of the road, should you decide that you're not going to play by the rules, there will be consequences. And we'll move from the choices and consequences of the ATF to the choices and consequences of Obamacare. Epic failed. 99% of Obamacare applications can't be processed. The nightmare scenario is coming this January. You've probably already heard that virtually no one can sign up using the online Obamacare exchanges. According to the insurance industry insiders who spoke to CNBC, 99 out of 100 applications don't contain enough information to result in enrollment. And this is all the while where you may have to be concerned about somebody coming to your house claiming that they're working for Obamacare. Hey, Mr. Jones, can you give me your social security number? Can you give me your phone number? If they ask you for your phone number, just give them the Obamacare number 1-800-FU. I'm not making that up. You can find that on DrudgeReport.com. Now let's move to some other important news, some real important news. Americans more interested in Miley Cyrus football than Obamacare or the government shutdown. Now let's just take a look at some of the top Google links as of this morning. And you can see rounding out the bottom there is Miley Cyrus on SNL. What will she lick this week? Also some wrestling, some football, uh, the Amber Alert, which is uh, uh, of some importance, and also the President's Cup Streaker. And these are the top things that the people are concerned about. I think they just need to get Miley Cyrus her own reality show. What did Miley lick this week? You know, because she's always licking something. And it could be like Fear Factor, where, you know, they have them lick cockroaches and, and bull testicles. That's what they do on the show. I'm not making that up. You can go watch those old Fear Factors. And just have Joe Rogan out there. And, hey, hey, Miley, what do you want to lick this week? And everybody shows up, and it'll be a good time. And I think that's what they need to do to get people actually concerned about some real issues. I can't believe that these are actual real search terms, but that's what's happening right now in the United States of America. Another thing that happened is a nine-year-old boy sneaks onto a plane and flies to Vegas. Despite numerous checkpoints, the boy believed to be a runaway from the Twin Cities took a train to the airport and was able to sneak past Minneapolis airport security without a ticket or a boarding pass. It wasn't until the plane was in mid-flight to Las Vegas that he was stopped and questioned. Airport officials have determined that this was not an airport shortcoming, but a Delta and TSA issue. Arrest warrant issued for Zokar Zarnayev in Massachusetts. Zarnayev, 20, of Cambridge, was indicted by a county grand jury in June for the murder of Officer Sean Collier on April 18th. He also faces a variety of charges on other charges, including armed assault with intent to murder for allegedly attacking Watertown police officers in a shootout in the early morning hours of April 19th, just a few hours after Collier's murder. Now, let me remind you, if you haven't heard it anyplace else, that the Zarnea brothers have no link to the uh, Collier killing other than the feds just saying that they did it. Now, it's a very unfortunate situation, and I do wish my condolences to the Collier family, but they're saying because the Zarnaev brothers were allegedly on some crime spree and this guy happened to die around the same time, they're just linking him in with the other events that they're saying the Zarnaev brothers are responsible for. And once again, there is no actual evidence that the Zarnaev brothers killed this man.
just like there's no evidence of them actually planting a bomb, but I'm sure that'll all come out in trial. Pharmaceutical firms paid to attend meetings, a panel that advises the FDA. Now, right after this break, we'll be talking about this more in depth with one John Rappaport. And I do believe this is a conflict of interest, but we'll see what he has to say about the issue. And we'll end our news segment tonight with this. Japan asks international community to help solve Fukushima crisis. Now, this is Shinzo Abe, the prime minister. He says... We are wide open, wide open to receive the most advanced knowledge from overseas to contain the problem, said Mr. Abe. So, you know, you remember when this first happened, they're saying, well, it's not that big of a deal, maybe for the people on Japan itself. But if you're here in the U.S., if you're any place in the world, you don't need to be too concerned about this. Then we saw the EPA raise the levels of acceptable radiation. There's been uh, reports of unexplained illnesses, especially on the coast of the United States. So it is something that needs to be looked into. And now even Japan themselves are getting in on the action, telling you that you need to be aware and take precautions for yourself. And one of the precautions you can take is go to the InfoWars shop and pick up nascent iodine. That is survival shield at the InfoWars shop. It's a great product. We take it here ourselves. Alex has said it's given him weight loss and other uh, great health effects. I've only been taking it for a short time, so I can't vouch for that personally. But to get it yourself, many of our of ourselves are taking it. Uh, Leanne McAdoo, also Anthony Gucciardi, as well as most of the office is looking into this. And take a look at it for yourself. And you can also stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. All the great stuff is right there on PrisonPlanet.tv. So stay tuned after this break. We'll be right back with John Rappaport and also some special reports. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall, and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. When I came in this morning, they handed me a stack of articles. We all sat down in our morning meeting. And we said, you know, there's so much tyranny going on in the world today. How can we ever cover this in a 30-minute show? So the best we could come up with, we need to make our own segment called Tyranny Watch. So here's Tyranny Watch giving you just some of the latest things that are happening in the world today. Welcome to Tyranny Watch. I'm Gigi Arnetta. The current administration has taken a full frontal assault on our constitutional rights. Topping the tyranny news... The Catholic priests who minister to Catholics on military bases worldwide are not permitted to work, not even to volunteer. During the shutdown, it is illegal for them to minister on base, and they risk being arrested if they attempt to do so. This is on the website, Archdiocese for the Military Services. 
So what about the First Amendment? Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble. And why are they picking on the Catholics? The House passed a bill over the weekend that's now sitting in the Senate that allows them to work through the shutdown. But why does this matter anyway? Why are we having this discussion? What happened to religious freedoms in the United States? And why is it that our Constitution all of a sudden is completely defunct during a shutdown? David Sanger, chief correspondent for The New York Times, worked for The Times for two decades and says, this is the most closed, control-freak administration I have ever covered. A memo went out from the chief of staff a year ago to White House employees and the intelligence agencies that told people to freeze and retain any email and presumably phone logs of communications with me, Sanger said. As a result, longtime sources no longer talk to him. So now the press has lost its ability to do its job. And leave it to the government shutdown. They've closed off different memorials across the United States, and they've enlisted their park rangers to do the dirty work. In fact, the park rangers have been told it's a cheap way to deal with the situation. An angry park service ranger in Washington says of the harassment, We've been told to make life as difficult for people as we can. It's disgusting. Now, just before the weekend, the National Park Service informed charter boat captains in Florida that the Florida Bay was closed due to the shutdown. Until government funding is restored, the fishing boats are prohibited from taking anglers into 1,100 square miles of open ocean. Fishing is also prohibited at Biscayne National Park during the shutdown. Let's see those goobers in the government go out and patrol the waters. In fact, let's let them be the enforcers. We can send them out there with little floaty devices and they can patrol the water. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. And not only are they doing it on water, but they're also harassing people in their own property. In California, we spoke with a gentleman named Roy Kaler. They've actually taken his property from him. He has beautiful redwood trees, and they have seized it. He thinks it's because they want to log his trees. It's uh, called the Taylor Micro Basin Wildlife and Wilderness Preserve. And the local county um, wants me to log 97% of the redwood trees, put in 30 houses, 15 of them being mansions at 7,500 square feet, the balance being... Um, at 1,500 square feet. He contacted us and let us know that they are also seizing all his possessions and they're basically having a yard sale. This is the United States of America. This is what it's turned to. And now the harassing senior citizens. On Lake Mead Thursday, a park ranger told a 77-year-old Joyce Spencer that her and her 80-year-old husband had to get out in 24 hours from their home. They had to pack up everything they had, and she was frustrated because she had to remember things he needed. He's 80 years old. So they sent her out and told her she couldn't go back to her home because it sits on federal land. And when the government reopens, she can pack up her stuff and come back. Look out, people. If they can do this in Lake Mead, they can do this right here. They can come to your house, take your property, do whatever they want, because apparently government shutdown means constitutional shutdown. Help fight the tyranny. Go to prisonplanet.tv and give your username and password up to 10 people. And I'm going to leave you with this. Recently, a senior citizen boarded a United flight in New Orleans and was removed by the TSA because the gate agent eh, didn't like him. That's how our government funds are being used. I'm Gigi Renetta. For this episode of Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News. John McAfee was on the Alex Jones radio show today to talk about, of all things, Obamacare. He's given his advice and his uh, concerns that you, the private citizen, won't be able to keep your private information private when you go to many of these websites, many of whom have been set up just to steal your private information. He's also concerned about the NSA and how he plans to combat the NSA with a new device. He'll tell you more in this clip. John, this is a short segment. I know you want to get into Obamacare. From what I've seen, it's the legalization of the NSA. It data mines everything. I know you've been writing about that. As an expert, tell us about that. And, uh, and I can't wait till this device comes out as well. Well, yeah, the, the problem with Obamacare, and, and this is just from a, a technological standpoint, Alex, is that uh, there is absolutely no security at all. For example, I can create a website, claim to be um, uh, an agent, uh, and 
ask, you know, let you log on, and because it's a healthcare system, I can ask you the most intimate questions, and you're going to answer them online. Uh, I will then get your social security number, your birth date, all the information I need to assume your identity and empty your bank accounts the following day. And yet, there is nothing in this central system that I can go to to verify that this is a legitimate website. It's insane. It is insane beyond belief. And I don't know who thought this thing up, but they have to be a complete idiot. And if you'd like to see more insights from our great guests like John McAfee, you can become a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. You can get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the Alex Jones radio show, the nightly news, the special reports, the movies, the rants. It's all right there. So stay tuned for my interview with John Rappaport right after this break. Jones Channel is the official page of the Info War, but don't miss what's happening on our other channels. The Info Warrior, with the week's best videos. Prison Planet Live, where Paul Joseph Watson gives his expert analysis. And keep up with the rest of the Info Wars crew on our other pages. All of our videos are available to repost for educational purposes. See the sidebar of the Alex Jones channel for the subscription links. And remember, you can always find our videos in the highest quality by becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. Introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals, all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates. We have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia, and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with the new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at InfoWars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News, and over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones radio show live as it happens. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show. And welcome back. Our guest tonight is John Rappaport of NoMoreFakeNews.com. He's going to be talking to us about how pharmaceutical companies are in bed with the FDA. Thanks for joining us, John. Good to be here. Now, I want to talk a little bit about this article you sent us. It says, shock, comparing deaths from medical drugs, vitamins, and all U.S. wars. Particularly, you have uh, many good things in here. But if we flip a few pages, scroll down a little bit, we'll see the summing up. And I see here, no deaths from vitamins in 2011. Also, over 100,000 deaths every year from pharmaceutical drugs. So can you go through us and uh, hit the high points? Well, sure, that's one of the high points. Virtually no deaths from vitamins, and yet the FDA is always taking uh, pot shots at vitamins and trying to restrict uh, consumer access to them. But meanwhile, the FDA is certifying a safe and effective every year medical drugs that kill at a minimum 106,000 Americans every year which is well over a million Americans per decade. And then referencing another study, a famous study, Barbara Starfield in the Journal of the American Medical Association in the year 2000, she finds that the medical system in America kills 225,000 people a year. And then I did a little research and added up the total number of military casualties, deaths, that is, in wars since the U.S. Revolutionary War, 
starting in 1775 to the present, we get 1,312,612 military deaths in all of those wars put together. But you can take any 10-year period of modern medical care in America, and you will find that the medical system kills 2,250,000 wow. Americans. And that's something that they don't want you to know. They don't want you to know the dangers of these drugs because we see them all the time. You can't watch TV for more than 10 minutes on any channel, except you know when you're watching the Infowars Nightly News on PrisonPlanet.tv, without seeing all of these uh, these ads for these pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah, there's a tremendous amount of suppression to keep these figures from the public because if they were released, especially in the comparative form that I just did now. Uh, the pillars of the whole medical system would collapse, I mean, overnight. And you would have not only investigations, but a public uproar, because people would realize that they're getting poisoned to death by the millions far more. I mean, it isn't even close what happens in wars. So this is basically chemical warfare, what we're talking about at home here in the U.S., being uh, launched on a continuous basis by the U.S. medical system. And when you speak of the wards, we think about the troops who come back and they're on all these psychotropic drugs. They come back with suicidal thoughts. They come back depressed, uh, willing to do harms and harm to themselves and sometimes even to others. Yes, that's another facet of the whole thing. Going back uh, roughly 14 years, if you wanted to get into the military and you had a history of any psychiatric drug usage, you would be ruled out. You couldn't get in, and that even included Ritalin. Now, everything has been completely turned around, thanks to the influence of the pharmaceutical industry. Now, soldiers go out there, and they are given in their battlefield packs all kinds of antidepressant pills that cause uh, people to commit suicide and violence to others, including homicide. And soldiers are dosing themselves out on the battlefield. And so, as you say, they come home, and they are in a completely frayed state of mind liable to do anything which of course is then blamed on quote uh, PTSD or uh, mental illness but really in most cases it's the drugs it's the medical drugs exactly exactly and he also pointed our attention to another article pharmaceutical firms paid to attend meetings of uh, panels that advise the FDA can you tell us a little bit about that Yes, uh, yet a new uh, revelation involving the influence of pharmaceutical money in U.S. government decisions on drugs. Now, we're talking about some of the most severe debilitating drugs, painkillers like Oxycontin, Vicodin, Percocet, morphine. Basically, what the pharmaceutical business is trying to do is to persuade the government and the public and the press that these drugs are really not all that harmful. They just don't happen to have all those horrible side effects that we all know they do, including making people into zombies. Mm -hmm. And so they want to assure that the FDA, which is responsible for all the literature on drugs and approving them, doesn't go too far in warning people about the dangers of these painkillers. So there have been these private conferences between the FDA and other U.S. health agency people, and now the pharmaceutical industry has gotten in on these by invitation, paying $25,000 per person wow. to attend these private meetings and to thereby exert influence over the FDA to make sure that everybody thinks these drugs are just fine and they're not horrendous, they don't destroy people's minds and bodies, no, it's all okay and let the money roll into the drug companies. So that was this morning's revelation, and it's just a tiny piece of the puzzle, because uh, in my research and research of many other reporters, we know that pharmaceutical money has played a tremendous role in influencing the FDA to make decisions to release dangerous, harmful, killer medical drugs on the public uh, for a very, very long time now. And we see this, Ms. Rapport, I want to get your, your comment on this, because we always see these children in the school system. You know, they're, the kids, they go to foster homes, or maybe they bring their Nerf gun to school. Now little Johnny needs these pills, little Susie needs these pills. Can you talk a little bit about the medicating our children from a very early age? 
This is maybe the most hideous of all, because you're now seeing kids that are being given antidepressants at age four or even younger in, in some cases. I mean, the idea that you're going to diagnose a very small child with clinical depression and you're going to give them killer drugs like Prozac, Paxil, and Zoloft, which produce unpredictable changes in brain chemistry. And like I said earlier, can cause people to uh, be provoked into violent action, suicide, all kinds of horrible actions. These kids are now being diagnosed and the schools play a large role in it because the teachers want to think of themselves as sort of medical assistants. Oh, well, we spotted little Jimmy here, and he's wiggling his foot in class, so he probably has ADHD, and uh, I have to refer him to the counselor, and then before you know it, the kid's sitting in front of a psychiatrist who says, yes, you have ADHD, we're going to give you Ritalin, which is a form of speed, amphetamines, and now after two months on this, the kid falls into a kind of a speed crash, depression, back to the doctor, the psychiatrist, who says, oh, we have a new condition, clinical depression, now it's got to be Prozac, and now exactly. the kid's brain is ripped even further apart. Exactly. Now, Mr. Rappaport, our time is short, so can you give us your final thoughts? The nation is being assaulted with these medical drugs. It is indeed, and I'm not exaggerating, chemical warfare. The press is not reporting it sufficiently, not even a little bit. People have to be aware of what these drugs are doing to them and their families, and especially their children. They're everywhere. They're supported by the government and by the corrupt FDA, which is letting these drugs on the market when they kill over 2 million people or in this case, the pharmaceutical drugs, over a million people per decade in the United States, which is a Holocaust. All right, John Rappaport, nomorefakenews.com. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you very much. Now, if you're torn by this information, you hear what we say here at InfoWars, but you also see all the pharmaceutical commercials on TV, and you just don't know what to do, you can stop by the InfoWars shop and pick up this month's InfoWars magazine. It has all the information you need to know about these prescription drugs like Prozac. Also, it has a very in-depth look at Obamacare, so you can learn this information and figure out the right thing to do for you and your family. Well, that's it for this edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show.